Today we're going to discuss fifth grade lab equipment. You need to look at what does the tool look like, what is its name, and what is its function. Now guys, a function just is what is the tool used for? In other words, what's its job? So let's get started. The first tool is called the triple beam balance. Its function is to measure mass. It gets its name because over here you can see one, two, three beams, three triple. There are weights along each of the beams that you slide. You would put the object that you're trying to mass over here on this pan. As you slide these weights, your goal is to get this pointer to line up with the white line. When it is lined up, we would say it's balanced. You would add the numbers on these beams and that would give you the mass of your object. The unit of measure is grams. In science, we only use the metric system. This tool is called a spring scale. This is what scientists use to measure weight. The unit of measure is newtons. The way this tool works is the object you are trying to weigh is attached to this hook. The spring scale is held in your hand. The object that is hanging will respond to gravity and gravity will pull down. There's a lever up here that slides down depending upon how the weight of your object. Weight is used, is easily confused with mass. The way I remember a spring scale measures weight is when I go to the doctor, they ask me to step on a scale. They never say step on a balance. So although this doesn't look like a typical scale, that might help you remember, well, balance to balance. Now that's not it. Okay, this is the tool that we measure. Now guys, the objects we measure in class are not very heavy. This spring scale is pretty small. You can hold it in your hand. So we're not measuring very heavy objects, just light objects. Inside this, there's a spring. That's how it gets its name. The function of a thermometer is to measure temperature. Now, although it shows both Fahrenheit and Celsius, in science, we would only use Celsius because that's the metric temperature scale. When you're taking temperature, you want to make sure your thumb and your fingers do not touch this part of your thermometer because this is what is responding to the temperature. So if you put your thumb or finger over the bulb of the thermometer, you're finding your body temperature. And most of the time, that's not what you're looking for. This is a graduated cylinder. At Tice, we have different sizes. Some are big, some are small. Some are made of plastic and some are made of glass. It gets its name because it's shaped like a cylinder and all these little dashes are called graduations. Basically, those little graduations are just taking these big numbers that we can see and making them smaller so you don't have to estimate as much. This is a pretty accurate measuring tool when you measure volume of liquids in a graduated cylinder, you need to be careful because the liquid tends to curve. That shape is called a meniscus and you always read the bottom of the meniscus. But what I want you to know about a graduated cylinder is its function is to accurately measure the volume, the amount of liquids. Hot plates can look differently. Sometimes they kind of look like a little stove. These are both electrical, so you need to make sure your hands are dry and that you've inspected the wires before you use them. They're kind of like little ovens or little stoves, like I said, they get extremely hot. So their function is to heat materials. Maybe you'd put a beaker on there and try to get some water to boil. You need to take extra special safety precautions so you do not get burned. This is a meter stick and we know it's a meter stick because it's exactly a hundred centimeters. These whole numbers are a centimeter. A centimeter is about the width of your pinky. This would be used to measure distances like length, width, and height that are bigger than a ruler. The tiny dashes are millimeters. So you can actually measure to the nearest millimeter, which is a 10th of a centimeter. We do not use inches and feet and yards. 
in science. Sometimes you're going to be asked to do outdoor investigations. A compass would most likely be used for an outdoor investigation. Its function is to help you find your directions or to help navigate. A metric ruler is a standard ruler that you guys are used to having in class. Although it may have inches, we do not use that. This MM right here stands for millimeters. Each of these tiny little dashes is a millimeter. These whole numbers are centimeters. This is smaller, so this would be a tool that you would use to, sm to measure smaller distances, something maybe like the width of your paper. Now you may not have thought of a camera as a scientific tool, but in science, one of the things we like to do is collect data. And data can be numbers, but sometimes the most effective form of data is, well, what actually happened? And you want to describe it. But why not take a picture so that people can actually see what occurred during your experiment? A camera allows you to collect that data you can see. That's called visual data. Collecting nets would probably also be used for outdoor investigations. So their job is to collect or capture something, usually insects like butterflies or dragonflies. A smaller collecting net might even be used to scoop a fish out of an aquarium. Magnets come in different shapes and sizes. This one appears called a horseshoe magnet, and this one down here is a bar magnet. They both have north and south poles. Here's south and here's north. Now we will study magnets later, but they are only attracted to certain metals. Not every object that is made of metal would be something that's magnetic. So we're going to study that. For example, silver and gold are not magnetic metals. This is a hand lens. People that are not scientists might want to call this a magnifying glass. And that makes sense because it does magnify images and it's made of glass. But scientists call this a hand lens. You can hold it in your hand and this glass piece is a lens. Its function is to magnify or make whatever you are looking at appear larger. So we may use this if we're trying to see details. Uh, maybe there's some small print we need to see or we're trying to look closely at uh, maybe the fibers on I don't know, a sweater or you want to look closer at the veins on a leaf but this you can hold in your hand this is a beaker these are usually made of glass these are not very accurate when it comes to measuring notice it doesn't have as many graduations or markings as the graduated cylinder that's why it's not as accurate this would be used to store liquids or chemicals you would use later in an investigation or possibly need to heat on a hot plate. A calculator would be a tool that if you had numeric data, in other words, data that has numbers and you need to do some mathematical calculations, this would help. Okay, so that's where the calculator would be useful in a science class. Lab aprons are considered safety equipment. Their job is to protect your clothing from either corrosive chemicals that could actually eat away at the fibers or to prevent your clothing from getting stained. Safety goggles are another piece of safety equipment. Even if you have glasses, you would still need to wear goggles in certain situations. Goggles should be worn when you are using chemicals, heating something because we know that when we heat liquids, they can sometimes splash and we don't want to get that in our eyes. And you might also need safety goggles if you're working with something like sand that is very tiny and if it were to get in your eyes could scratch. Insulating gloves are another piece of safety equipment. They are used when you are heating something. Maybe you have heated a beaker on a hot plate and you need to remove it. It would not be safe just to use it your bare hands, so you would get these gloves. They block the heat from that hot beaker so that it does not burn your hands. They're kind of like scientific oven mitts. All right, these are both terrariums. This um, looks maybe a little bit like an aquarium, and this is just really like a soda bottle. The reason this is not called an aquarium 
is what's living in it. Terrariums are glass or plastic containers, but they only have land plants or animals. So because this is not like filled with water and fish, instead it has dirt, some plants, maybe even something like insects or lizards, this is a terrarium. Okay, so you have to look at what is living inside of it. Terra, T-E-R-R-A, actually means earth or land. So that's how it gets its name. Aqua for an aquarium means water. So if what is living inside the containers is a land plant or animal, it would be called a terrarium. These are miniature ecosystems. A microscope is also used to magnify objects. The hand lens does magnification as well. A microscope has many lenses. These are called objective lenses, and then there's another one up here. These are much more powerful than a hand lens, so they allow you to see things that are even smaller than a hand lens would allow. Scientists use these all the time in the medical field. They can look at things tiny, tiny, tiny. You might even call those things microscopic. Things like bacteria. Okay, these are much stronger magnification tools. This is a prism, and we study prisms when we study light. They refract light. In other words, they bend light. So this is called white light. It's what you're used to, just the light we use. If it shines through a prism, notice it changes directions. What comes out is what we would call a rainbow, but it's the visible spectrum. Okay, so notice the light passes through and then separates it into the rainbow. This is a stopwatch. It is a measurement tool because it measures time. These are convenient because they can measure pretty accurately and they can be um, held in the hand. All right, those are the tools you are responsible for in fifth grade. If you need to go back and rewatch this, go ahead and do that. Make sure you would be able to identify the tools from pictures. Make sure you know their names and make sure you know their functions. In other words, what are each of the tools used for?